good Shabbos again, everyone, and good Yantiv. The story is told of a little girl who was talking to her teacher about whales. And the teacher said it was physically impossible for a whale to swallow a human because even though it was a very large mammal, its throat was very small. The little girl stated that Jonah was swallowed by a whale. Irritated, the teacher reiterated that a whale cannot swallow a human. It was physically impossible. Well, the little girl said, okay, fine. When I get to heaven, I'll ask Jonah. The teacher replies, well, what if Jonah went to hell? And the little girl replies, then you ask him. <laughs> Probably a true story at some point in the history of our people. Speaking of the afterlife, people sometimes ask me, Rabbi, why do we recite Mourner's Kaddish? Is it just for us or is it also for our loved ones? We do believe that eventually all people, except for the extreme wicked, will ultimately be rewarded by making it to heaven. And while tradition holds that everything will eventually work out, we do believe in a Jewish type of purgatory, a Jewish in-between stage called Gehenna. Here it's believed that those who are not completely righteous go here before they go to heaven because their souls first need to be purged of their sins. The good news is that it's not a place of punishment. There's no fire, or brimstone, pitchforks, and devils. Rather, it's a place, according to our tradition, to review our lives and to see where we could have improved, to face the potential of what we could have done with our lives here on earth. And once we do, our souls are spiritually cleaned and fully prepared to go to the next stage, heaven. Gehenna is almost like a dry cleaner for the souls. Once the soul is properly cleaned, it can be picked up and taken to heaven. The other good news is this in-between stage, no one stays longer than 12 months. When our parents are passed away, we're instructed to say mourner's Kaddish for them no longer than 11 months. Why not the full 12? Because one of the reasons we say Kaddish is that by saying mourner's Kaddish, we're actually helping the souls of our beloved reach heaven faster. But we can't believe that our parents would be that bad they would need the full 12 months in that purgatory, in Gehenna. So we say Kaddish for only 11 months. Now maybe some of you do feel that your in-laws would need the full 12 months, but be warned, the official practice is 11. And of course today, as part of the Yisker service of Shavuot, we'll of course recite the Mourner's Kaddish. But today, with our busy lives, and assuming we believe the tradition that our loved ones need us to say Kaddish for them, is that enough motivation? Because we are so busy today. Who has the time to come every day, twice a day, for 11 months when we lose a parent? Perhaps there's something in this holiday that can inspire us. Now, while today the festival of Shavuot is described as a remembrance of Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah at Sinai, biblically, and in the days of the temple, this holiday and this date had a completely different meaning. In ancient days, Shavuot was primarily an agricultural festival, referred to as Chag HaBikorim, the festival of the first fruits. The laws and ceremony of Bikorim are amongst the most beautiful and meaningful in all the Torah. Any Jew in ancient Israel who owned fruit trees had to take a portion, any amount, of those first fruits produced from the tree, tie it in a bundle, and bring it as an offering to the temple in Jerusalem. And the day the ceremony began was on Shavuot. As my colleague Rabbi Mitchell Wolberg described, the ceremony itself was a very inspiring one. The Mishnah describes the masses gathering outside of Jerusalem, beginning their march with their fruits being carried in baskets. And before this large parade went an ox, its horns overlaid with gold. A flute was played while the rulers and dignitaries of the entire city of Jerusalem went out to greet them, proclaiming, Brothers, men of such and such a place, you are welcome to Jerusalem. And then came the beautiful pageantry of the temple service. Undescribable. The Levites breaking forth in song while the farmers carried their baskets into the temple, placing them next to the altar and reciting the prayers of thanksgiving. 
This whole ceremony ended with the destruction of the temple. But the way in which the ceremony took place still has a great lesson for all of us. In describing the Bikurim ritual, the Torah tells us, and you shall go into the place where the Lord shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. And based on these words, and you shall go into the place, Maimonides, in explaining the Bikurim, makes the following comment. He who brings the first fruits has permission to give them to his servant or relative to carry the whole way until he reaches the outer precincts of the temple. But when he reaches the outer precincts of the temple, he has to take the basket himself on his own shoulders, even if he is the king of Israel. Yes, there was just so much that your servant or your messenger or your proxy or your personal assistant could do on your behalf. You could delegate responsibility only to a certain point. The legwork could be done by your concierge company, but not the offering itself. It was not enough to have your representative bring your offering to the temple. You had to bring it yourself. You yourself had to be there to personally recite that Thanksgiving prayer. The Bikurim ritual comes to remind us that as busy as we are, there are certain things we must do ourselves. No deputy, no proxy, no messenger or assistant is the same. There are certain things that even if you are the king of Israel, there's no one that can do it but you. A person who learned this lesson of saying Kaddish themselves is the protagonist of the great book, a new book called Kaddish.com, written by Nathan Englander. It tells the story of an Orthodox Brooklyn father and how his two children confront the mourning period. His daughter takes every aspect of Jewish law seriously. She expects her brother to do the same, to say Kaddish for the entire 11 months. But Larry is now secular, and he finds Kaddish and all the morning rituals meaningless. And to the horror and dismay of his sister, Larry refuses. To appease her, Larry hatches an ingenious yet cynical plan. He literally goes on the internet in search of a website where he might be able to find someone willing to say Kaddish for a price. He actually refers to it in the book as a J-date for the dead. And he finds a website, Kaddish.com, and he finds someone there to say the prayer, and he believes shepherd his father's soul safely to rest. He finds someone in Jerusalem, and the deal is made. But many years later, Larry realizes something's wrong. It doesn't feel good. It feels like he's still in mourning. And he also returns to his roots. He becomes religious again. And he goes to Jerusalem in search of that man who said Kaddish for his father so he can say and take the obligation himself. He now wants that obligation. And when it comes to the art side and to Yisker, the son finally has come to the realization that for himself and for his own mourning process, there are certain things in life that no one can do but you. You have to do it yourself. And yes, many of you know this firsthand. I know many people here at our congregation who feel the same. After losing his dear mother, my friend and member Gary shared this with me. He said, the rabbis will tell you it's for the elevation of the soul. And I believe in that. But the real benefit, he writes me, is for those of us left behind. I learned from lots of friends who said Kaddish, and I suspect several learned from me. And one of the benefits to me was that by spending a portion of my day in mourning and in prayer, it allowed me rest of the day to actually focus on my work and my family and my daily duties. I've seen too many people, however, of all races and religions, jump right back into their normal activities only to crash and burn in the months that follow. I learned mourning is important. It's how we heal our bodies and our souls. Yes, Rabbi, at times it was variously challenging, rewarding, private, public, grueling, and refreshing. It was truly a journey. For me, at the end of the year, I actually felt restored. And nothing will ever replace the hole in my heart left by my mother's death. 
but I know that I did what I needed to to mourn and heal myself. After losing his wonderful father, our member Greg wrote to me. He said, Brian, as for Kaddish, it was a way for me to continually solidify and perpetuate memory. I made it a point to be present in the Greenfield Chapel every night I was in town. I always added something to it. For example, each evening after Mariv, I would come up with a different memory of how my father, that I may not have thought about for a while. It ranged from enjoying a sporting event to being reprimanded for screwing up in school, as I did often. But the process provided an indescribable level of comfort on a daily basis. My situation may have been different because, thank God, my father lived a long life. But the best lesson, the constant recitation of Kaddish taught me, that life lives on through the perpetual memory, which for me was enhanced through the Kaddish process. It was literally the most therapeutic process I had ever experienced before. Yes, my friends, saying Kaddish for a loved one is a serious commitment. It eats into family time, into work time, and most of all, sleep. You plan your day around it. But members like Gary and Greg and numerous others, men and women, always tell me it was worth it. Because losing a loved one is a lonely experience. But grieving as a group and giving ourselves time to mourn by saying the mourner's Kaddish makes the year not as lonely. And so it is with Yisker. Yes, my friends, only we can say Yisker for our loved ones. Only we have the memories, just as only our children will have the memories of us. May those memories inspire us. May they give us the inspiration we need. And may they remind us of our obligations and our obligations alone. Let us now begin the Yisker service for this Shavuot, page 330. 